my fellow Nibiruans. Oh, sorry, wrong video. I haven't made uh, the vegan buzz for quite a while because it takes um, a bit of editing and I've got a job and all that, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. Of course it does technically. Um, but the first big news of the month is that Dr. Michael Greger's new book, How Not to Die, is out slash available for pre-order, depending on when you watch this video. And it's not just a dispassionate list of all the ways not to die, although I'm sure that would find a market. But he's the man behind nutritionfacts.org, and that's a site that looks at the medical studies that are done firsthand and then presents them in a way that a normal person can understand. And if you think, well, because I'm vegan, I'll already know everything he has to say, you'd be amazed by some of the stuff he comes out with, the most incredible facts from these studies, such as women who eat a single egg a day appear to be shortening their lives as much as they would by smoking five cigarettes a day. I mean, that is a study that's actually been done, and remember that fact for later on. Um, but I've learned things like, you know, in addition to all the things we know to be wrong with meat, they're always finding new and bizarre ones. After a meal of animal products, people suffer from endotoxemia. Their bloodstream becomes awash with bacterial toxins, known as endotoxins, that are present in the animal products. So, I mean, no wonder our body goes crazy. These dead meat bacteria toxins aren't destroyed by stomach acid, aren't destroyed by pancreatic enzymes, right? Aren't destroyed by cooking. They tried boiling meat for hours, still didn't work. And so um, these bacterial toxins were found to be highly resistant to cooking and our body's best attempts at acid and enzyme um, digestion. Now, the animal fat actually does play a profound role in this whole process by ferrying the bacterial toxins present in the meat through the gut into our system. So the reason animal products trigger immediate inflammation appears to be because they're so loaded with bacteria that can trigger inflammation dead or alive, even if they're fully cooked. And then saturated animal fat then boosts the absorption of these toxins into our bloodstream. And if we could just pause it there, because another thing that Dr. Greger's work has surprised me with is uh, some of the reasons we don't get to hear about these studies. One of the biggest being the attitude that health professionals have towards the general public. So now that we know what's going on, what do we have to do? Well, from a 2012 follow-up, uh, well, the obvious, most obvious solution to this metabolic endotoxemia, okay, well, we can reduce saturated fat intake, which in this country is mostly uh, cheese and chicken, but the Western diet is not conducive to this mode of action, and it is difficult for patients to comply with this request. So what, let's not even tell them, right? I mean, this patronizing attitude in the medical profession of, oh, patients won't change their diet or stop smoking, I mean, even if it's gonna kill them, you know, so why bother, right? That attitude may be one of the real leading causes of death. But let's get back. So how not to die will, if nothing else, make our lecturing of others that bit more interesting, because you can supplement it with facts like, well, of course, hibiscus tea, may be more effective in treating hypertension than the commonly prescribed drugs. And you know, that's the kind of thing that gets people's attention. Now, many of you may be aware of this already, but I've recently been appointed Shadow Agriculture Minister in my capacity as Labour MP for Bristol. And lots of people have been congratulating me on that, so thank you very much. It's either me or someone with the same name. Someone who took all the Kerry McCarthy social media handles off the internet before I realized that the whole online thing was going to catch on, hence why I'm Kerry McCarthy. That is the reason. Folks, when your cosmic order disproportionate influence over the nation's health to peddle your vegan agenda from a Brighton basement as a student, it's all very well stating your name to the universe for identification, but in hindsight, I'd probably say now you need to be very specific indeed, especially if your name is not that unusual, or you can get these ontological cross wires. And I've emailed Keza to suggest that since we are all ultimately subjective temporal cross sections of one infinite source energy anyway, perhaps I can do Monday to midday Wednesday and she can take it from there. But, uh, I have yet to hear back from her. 
Kerry McCarthy being Shadow Agriculture Minister is excellent news. She is an outspoken vegan, if you don't know. And the papers are saying, whoa, why'd they put a vegan in charge of agricultural matters? But others are saying that that's exactly what's needed because, as Maria Chirando put it in The Guardian, most vegans have emphatically chosen to disengage with meat and dairy industries because they deem the standards of rearing and slaughtering animals for food too low. And actually, I don't agree with that. But I mean, for a lot of us, it's more simple than that, that eating animals is cruel, unnecessary and kills you in the long run. But she does make a good point that what you need in that role is somebody who gives a shit about the animals, you know. So hopefully Keza is going to do everything she can to represent what few interests farm animals are allowed to have. I mean, it's a horrible job to have to do when you don't agree with farming animals, as she may not. But um, practically speaking, we know we're stuck with this for the time being. So I think it's good that someone like her is going to try and improve conditions as much as she possibly can, hopefully, whilst delivering the same message through her own lifestyle choice not in my name. I don't even agree with this. So I don't know what you think about that. Comment below because the temptation is to completely disengage with these industries that you don't believe in. But I think what Kerry will hopefully be doing is very courageous. I hope another thing she looks at is the NHS website, which continues to give people advice that medical science shows to be harmful. I mean, that's the most irresponsible thing in the world. Milk's good for your bones, they say, despite the studies, right? Try to give your child three servings of dairy a day. Where's the science to back this up? The majority of studies on dairy show no link between milk and good bone health. In fact, many show a negative relationship with more fractures amongst populations that consume more dairy. The very few studies that do show a link have of course been conducted by an interested party and are designed to show that result. And as if that wasn't insult enough, they're so badly designed to show that result. I mean, one of them openly gives all participants a calcium supplement every day in addition to the milk and then monitors bone health and, and uh, attributes it to the milk. I mean, watch this uh, video from Dr. McDougall because he goes into details on that one. If you want to hear more, I'll link to it below. Talking of governments misleading people, I was introduced to the term astroturfing this week by the vegan revolution, who told me this is the practice of people pretending to be grassroots characters online and basically doing things like continually criticizing those people who are trying to do good within a community whilst pretending to be one of those people themselves, you know. So just constantly editing Wikipedia pages to show things their way, posting bad reviews, posting good reviews of products they want to promote. And a very big story came out recently about the way the American government campaigned against vegan mayonnaise, if you can believe that. And I saw an interview with someone from that company, Hampton Creek. They make egg alternatives and egg alternative products. And he was saying, yeah, I mean, they may have put a hit out on me because that seemed to come up in an email, although hopefully in jest. But uh, I just was watching this interview and thinking, bloody hell, this guy's paranoid. I've never heard of the textured vegetable protein mafia before. I didn't think that would happen. But apparently it's true. The president of the American Egg Board got really worried a couple of years ago about this company's products harming egg sales. So they started doing seriously underhand stuff. They hired the largest PR firm in the world and got bloggers and nutritionists, the people who are supposed to be protecting you, the nutritionists, I mean, um, to write egg positive stories for cash. And remember that fact from earlier that an egg a day is like smoking a handful of cigarettes for breakfast. Well, thousands of pounds went towards real-time monitoring and responding to many of this company's products online. So I presume that means negative comments, bad reviews, that kind of thing. This from the government. <laughs> and we know this goes on from just general people. If you are on YouTube, you don't even have to have a big channel before people are pretending to be you. And you kind of think, who the hell would have that sort of interest. This is incredible. So if you do get a drunken lascivious text from me at three in the morning, um, that's what I'm going to blame it on. If you were on the Happy Healthy Vegan channel recently from whence I got that story, you may also have noticed Fun For Louie, who's a huge YouTuber, is the latest one who's decided to go vegan. And this was after he watched Cowspiracy. There've been lots of people who are doing this, young, responsible people saying enough is enough mum dad i know you didn't have a problem destroying the planet for a living 
but I can't live like that. And in a way, it's a sort of rebellion, isn't it? It's a rebellion against the baby boomer generation, people of my age who may not have given much of a fuck and were quite nihilistic in the way they lived. And well, them and everyone else in history, I suppose. And I am in absolute awe of, of people younger than I am who are facing new problems that we couldn't even have imagined before. And they're kind of rolling up their sleeves and saying, okay, what needs to be done? I mean, I find it so inspiring. And we've seen immense bravery in matters of patriotism and defending a national way of life before. I don't think we've ever seen so many people coming together and attempting to make the entire world better for everyone and for animals and, you know, without the threat of war or invasion to drive that. And of course, it is a war, though. It's a cultural war that does threaten everyone's lives. When you look at obesity rates and rates of diabetes and cancer and heart disease. But a big insult now is that people are virtue signaling, i.e. they're pretending to be doing good when they're not actually doing good. Well, do you know what? That is progress. Just the fact that it's fashionable to be doing something positive is a step in the right direction. We're obviously turning our collective face towards the light. And if people are having a go at others for not doing it properly, well, there's your quality control. Standards are being appraised at all times. A parting gift for you if you're a, a vegan of Britain, vegan corn is going to be on our shelves in the next month or so. It's quite a sad day when a meat substitute contains animal products, but corn has always had eggs in it. So in a way, this announcement is something of an anti-climax because you're hardly about to be ushered into the fold of conformity. Now you get to eat with the people who feast on corn burgers because they're only vegetarians. They're practically as weird and eccentric as we are, just not as bothered about ethics. Um, so we'll save the bunting for when vegan Ben and Jerry's actually makes it to the shelves. But with both of these examples, apparently um, it came about because of the petitions, the whining, the agitating, the crying, the tantrums, the petulant Facebook posts, the knockdown tweeting. And so carry on with that. Good work. Thanks a lot for watching. Another vegan buzz coming sooner than this one came. Clumsy. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.